Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'm in my little shop. This is where I keep lawnmower equipment and all kinds of stuff. And I'm taking a bunch of mechanics tools and I'm going to just make this wall look nicer as well as organizing the tools. I've got some leftover cedar fence boards. I've only got six of them here and I'm just gonna see what I can make with this leftover. To start out, I'm just running all of these boards through my drum sander. They had one side that was a little bit smoother, but I wanted it even smoother than that, just so it looked nice. Then I have some really coarse paper on my drum sander, so I wanted to get rid of some of those lines that it left, so I hit it with a random orbit sander very quickly. Next up, I just cut them all to the length that they needed to be for the large wall, and I did that all at the same time. I did not joint all of these perfectly, there were just a few of them that had quite an arch to them, so I joined it aside here or there. Power Pro sent me a bunch of hardware to use for another project that I did not get to before winter set in. So, I'm highlighting them in this video. They're great hardware. Go check them out, and I used all Power Pro screws for this project. With something like this, it's important that your first row is very level, so take the time to make sure that is right. Then, most of your others, as long as your boards aren't really off, should line up quite well. A few considerations about this backer material. This is cedar, so it's very soft. You have to be sure not to pull the screws right through it. The other thing is I wanted to make sure that all of the screws were really lined up because they would be visible. So you can see here, I'm marking out a couple of the spots that I forgot to mark before I just got all happy and started putting it on the wall. And then from here forward, I marked them all before I put them up so that all of the screw holes were in the same spot on each board. Next up, it was more of the same, but this time for the short side. I cross cut them to length at the miter saw, marked out where the holes needed to be and attached them to the wall. One cool thing about this wall is if you'll notice from the right side over to the left side, the grain matches on each of the boards. So I was able to keep them in an order to where I get kind of a grain wrap from one wall to the other. I'm not trying to get totally fancy here, but I did want a little bit of finish on this just so it wouldn't collect quite as much dust. I found this old can of brushing lacquer that I've had sitting around for a while and I grabbed it. The only thing I had was one of these foam brushes and I didn't know until this point that lacquer dissolves foam brushes. So it went all floppy and messed up and I just wiped on the rest of it. I've got a bunch of scraps left over from other projects. Uh, this is mostly maple with a little bit of walnut. Got some of these walnut cutoffs. Uh, a bunch of these white oak panels that aren't really good for much else, but I knew I was gonna be doing some tool walls. So I'm gonna see if I can make some of the holders out of this stuff, dress it up a little bit. First up is a holder for all of my pliers and cutters. It's nothing really complicated. I grabbed a piece of maple, drilled a bunch of holes in it, attached another board onto the back to make sort of an L, and then all of the handles of the pliers can actually fit down inside there. There's no formula to this stuff. It kind of just matters what tools you have and what you're trying to put up on the wall. Each of the tools is probably a little bit unique and you're gonna have to get creative with how you hang them. I moved on to my point setter. This is a tool that you can actually mount things in a picture frame very easily. If you've ever seen those little metal pieces that come out of the back of commercially available picture frames, this is how it's set in there. It works a lot like a manual staple gun and you just put it flush with the thing and pull the trigger and it shoots one of those into the frame. I'll put a link below to this thing as well as all of the other tools and materials that I use. So if you wanna check any of those out, be sure to click on those links. Both the point setter and my stapler were really easy to make. I just had a white oak backer board and used a piece of walnut, cut them out on the bandsaw, shaped them at the sander, and glued them on. Next up was a holder for these big C-clamps. The issue with these is they needed a spot to hang, but I also had to put this other piece at the bottom that would kind of grab the bottom part of the C-clamp. Because they're so heavy, gravity wanted them to kind of swing, and this would keep them from moving. 
I found this really highly figured piece of white oak and used it to put together a little platform that could go right beside the point setter and the stapler, holding all of the supplies for both of those things. At this point, my hacksaw was feeling a little bit left out, as it should, because I don't use it very much, but there are times when it's handy. So I switched over to some CA glue. This thing is not very heavy and I knew it would have plenty of hold. So I just applied the CA glue to one side, used the accelerator to the other side, and it was almost an instant bond. The CA glue that I'm using is made by Starbond. It's good stuff. They have the accelerator as well. It also comes in different colors that I use for void filling here and there. But if you wanna pick some of this stuff up, I have a discount code. Click the link below in the description and you can get 15% off of your order. Add this trowel to the list of things I don't use very often, but there have been a few times when it's handy to have one. So I just whipped up a quick holder. Once this thing is against the wall, it holds it quite well and the handle can't swing down very far. I actually saved the point setter and the stapler holder to glue up while I was gluing up the other thing so I could just knock a bunch of stuff out at once. For finish on these, just so they look nice, again, I'm going with lacquer, but this time from a spray can and just a single coat. I had a socket set that I used decently often and it actually had its own little holder. So I cut a piece of walnut and screwed this piece right to it. For my next trick, I'm going to turn these pieces of walnut into walnut dowels without using a lathe. Yep, that's right. <laughs> it's not really that big of a secret. I've got a dowel plate that I got from a company called DFM. I'll link it below. It's really great. I love being able to make dowels out of any species that I want. To use this tool, it's so simple. Cut a square piece to whatever size you think you want, but obviously a little larger than what you want. You're gonna need to hammer it through probably four or five different holes to get it round. Then I just used a block plane to taper the edges so that it will go into the dowel plate pretty easily. And from there, you just keep going down until you reach the size that you want. After a little bit of sanding and a light chamfer on the outside edge, I just nailed these dowels into their home. There were a few holders that had not been hit with the lacquer, so I did that real quick before moving on to the last few holders. For some of the final holders, I needed a spot for my crowbar and my little bit smaller pry bar. And I'm pretty happy with the solution I came up with for this. You'll see in just a second. I used the actual crowbar to mark out on a larger piece of walnut exactly where I needed to cut. Once again, took it to the bandsaw, cut it out, and then refined the shape on my oscillating spindle sander. Then, and here's where it gets interesting, I put a little hole in the front edge of it and used some CA glue to inset a neodymium magnet. That is going to actually hold the tail of the smaller pry bar up against it. It'll all make sense when you see me put it up on the wall. Another odd tool is my stud finder. I don't use it that often, but there are times that I grab for it and I just made a simple cage to go on top of this one so it basically couldn't fall out forward and then put a piece on the bottom of it that it could rest on. All right, I've got all the tool holders made. Now all that's left is to start putting them up here. I don't have a particular order I'm going for. I'm gonna just kinda place them where they look right to me. Um, I'm very right-handed, so some of the tools that I use more will probably be kinda in this area here, but um, let's get them on the wall. And right about here is where you can see that tiny little magnet come into play. Thank you. 
And as you can see, I'm holding them up there before I actually secure them, just placing them where I think they ought to go on the fly. I'm kind of organizing them from most used down lower and toward the right to least used being above those and maybe over toward the left side. For a lot of these, I pre-drilled and secured them right in place at the wall. So I'm not gonna talk about each of those things and how I pre-drilled them and secured them. That's boring. Just know that I use more of those Power Pro screws and the thickness of the holder that I was securing actually dictated which screw size I went with. So I'm gonna shut up, just sit back and enjoy the soothing sounds of an impact driver. I thought about pushing the easy button and just using this ready-made thing and like cutting it out on the bandsaw, but I don't want this yellow thing on the tool wall after I've taken time to, you know, make it look nice. Because this one actually is another one of the tool holders and it actually came out to where I can hold all those, but I'm going to make it out of walnut. Because why not? I just used my crosscut sled on the table saw and I first started out just with even spacing on them but quickly found that some of the wrenches were a little bit different size so I had to size them individually. So that's really it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. I wanted to give a big thanks to PowerPro Hardware. Uh, I had another project that got delayed a little bit. They sent me a bunch of hardware, all these screws that you saw, they were sent to me for that project. So just as a big thank you, I wanted to shout them out in this one as an extra. Uh, they make great hardware, go check them out. You can find them in most stores. I'll put a link below to some of their stuff, but thank you for watching. I really needed to get this stuff organized and now I'm glad that it's up on the wall, out of the way, but easy to access. If you feel like I earned it, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next video.